lovelies, what is coming in for you in November? I've been doing a bit of meditating on this. I've had eye surgery on both eyes now, so I've had a lot of time to do a lot of, and it's weird what you do um, when you can't see out as much, you definitely see in a bit more. So you've probably noticed, apart from the fact I'm not on camera at the moment, and I will be back very soon, that a lot of the readings are quite inward and I've been doing some meditating on November and I feel like I must use the J word. I feel like there is an element of journey going on for all of us. So I'm going to use a Sacred Traveller Oracle card first because it's all about the journey. I'm going to be saying journey quite a lot. I know it can't be helped. It wouldn't be my first choice. Um, I'm also going to use channeled messages during this reading at the moment, and this is really nice, but really random. I'm being channeled a red woolen garment, really, really bright red. So this could be a hat that you once knitted or some mittens or like a, a handmade sort of jumper. There's something there about, I don't know, the wool is really bright red. So the colour red could be in there, the woolen garment is in there, knitting could be in there. Maybe you're going to learn to knit, mate, but I feel like this is someone who already knits, to be fair. Um, there's going to be a lot of channeled messages this time. And the first card that we're getting to look at is, let's just zoom in a bit because it's actually easier doing it that way. Rejuvenating rain. Rejuvenating rain. Clear the past and heal the present. I've been feeling this for a couple of weeks, at least. It feels as if, it feels as if we're clearing things actually for 2025. You know, it feels like the Scorpio season, which we've still got until round about the 20th or so of November has been calling on all of us to dig really, really deep and also to kind of review things that normally we might not have wanted to review. I, you know, I'm not a huge, I've done a lot of shadow work recently. I've done a lot of shadow work videos and I'm not an advocate of doing it all the time. You know, there's a time and a place and I'm feeling like this last couple of weeks and the next couple of weeks, plus one maybe, has been and will be the time and the place to clear something from the past. Okay, just gonna get that to actually focus. There we go. Clear the past, heal the present. So some of this is in the 3D, in the physical, very much a case of clearing clutter, clearing stuff out of your space, but also I feel that for some of you, you need to claim a space back from something or somebody. So this could like, this could be, you know, as literal as you've had to share your desk at work, you know, or you've had to share some kind of accommodation with somebody that you don't normally share with, you know, it can be any, any one of a number of things in that way. But it feels like, you don't need to take it back because taking it back and what I'm getting channeled is that taking it back will actually destroy the thing you're taking back. So for example, if you get really, really angry with someone who's kind of invading your space and then by the time you take it back, you've argued so much that you can't even relax in it, then you've almost allowed them to mess up and destroy your space. Do you see what I mean? It feels like, it feels like it got wrecked on the way out. And this is more, you can see how this woman's putting a hand into water. It's like when you're reclaiming your space, you need to be able to bring your hand back out of the water and everything still be clear. Let's take a second one of those cards. So we're going to look at a little bit of everything here, okay, in the end. We'll see what comes up. We'll be very much governed by what cards come up. And we'll be looking, touching on love life, life purpose, career, messages, channeled messages, anything.
everything you need to know really for the oncoming month of November. Nice. We get view from above. Get the big picture. This as well says that if you're in a situation that you need that you need to fight for in a way but you need to fight clean you know not dirty you're going to have to have perspective in other words you're going to have to know what's worth fighting for and what isn't so not every aspect of what you want or need is going to require you to push forward some aspects of what you want or need or what you're trying to clear or what you're trying to keep or what you're trying to lose they're going to cooperate with you really easily and this is going to be partly your clue here so in other words if you are feeling a lot of resistance don't put up a fight to it because even though you may not see why you need something to happen this way or why you need to be able to let go of something. It feels like in hindsight, you will know, but at the present time you won't, but you'll get a feeling of whether there is a feeling of resistance or whether there is a feeling of ease. Okay. What you're dealing with is not easy but the way that you're dealing with it should give you a feeling of ease. You should be moving from something that was tense and tight and difficult to something that is loose and forgiving and easy. Sounds a lot like my elasticated trousers, but there you go. Okay, I'm going to take one more of these and then on to the tarot. What do we need to know? Oh, hello, there we go. One's on the floor, it's just what we like. Oh my God. I don't feel like we'll be able to get it off the floor. Oh, lush. Stepping into power. Yes. Let's just put these down here for a second. Definitely leave me a comment and let me know if this resonates because I can already feel that this does resonate with at least some of you. Let's move you out of the way, mistress, and then we'll put this here. That's better. Okay. So you can see how this is a progression, but it's also something that you may go back to. So it may be that you manage to clear something, you look at the big picture, you can see what's happened, and then you step into power and then you lose a grip on this thing or something else comes up and you're into it again, you're going to clear something. So this is something that could be happening on a cycle, kind of on a loop, but it's a loop that behaves like a spiral, okay, and comes up. Some of you may get gifted something if it's your birthday or if you're just buying yourself something, you may spot things that are spirals. For example, earrings, you know, like dangly earrings that are spirals. Um, maybe a ring that's a spiral or some piece of jewellery, a necklace or um, candle holder. I don't know. There's something about spirals being very powerful. And also, and I don't understand this at all, and any mathematicians out there very gratefully received, um, something about numbers that go into spirals, like number patterns, so you may recognize, and let me know in the comments if anyone knows about this, because that was it's quite exciting. Um, you may recognize that something, and I'm not talking necessarily, but you could, I'm not talking that you're spiraling down, although you could, you could spiral down and up and down and up, but you're kind of going around and around and around. And as you go up, it's like a corkscrew effect where you come upwards, you're just not doing it in a line. It's, there's nothing linear about November, okay? Nothing linear about November. Okay, let's put those bad boys up there. I think people might be having an argument in my street. That's very exciting. 
Either that or they're just having a very enthusiastic conversation. <laughs> Were you arguing? I was not. I was just speaking enthusiastically. Okay, let's take a card. From the Mystic Maiden Tarot. Loads of people are asking me about this one. There it is. Okay, I'm going to cut this. I'm going to take a card and we're going to focus on that card and see what the story is for November, for the journey. I know I'm having to get used to saying the J word for the journey. Take one card, please. Let us know where do we what's the actual main event here please what is the main event okay what is the source of this what is the source okay it's just enthusiastic talking Love it when we get a major. Right, so we've got strength. Okay, good. That fits completely with the cards that we've already had. So when you get the strength card, it's a number eight for a start. So we've got infinity in the mix, but we've also got movement with number eight. Now, strength is know thyself. The oracle at Delphi and the plaque above, know thyself. Some of you have been in a situation where you have been over leaning intellectually, I think, to work something out. You could be working out about a love relationship. It could be about a toxic situation at work. It could be about what you do next. Do you buy this house? Do you go to that party? You know, whatever it is. And for different people, it's going to be different things. The universe here is telling you to do something that educates you more about your own limits. Some of you are pushing your own boundaries to get to something. Now, this could be that you're dismissing red flags. It could be that you are not acknowledging your own limitations, but also and I don't mean that those limitations will be forever, but for some of us, we're very sensitive about certain things. And we're kind of one way of trying to get strength and power is to go, it'll be all right, it'll be all right, I'll just do it, I'll just do it. And then sometimes we get to it and we're like, it's really not all right. There's something here about getting the measure of yourself, which is not the same as giving in but getting the measure of yourself and also about vulnerability and going into whatever this is, you know, it could be a job interview, whatever, but going into something with a feeling of this doesn't have to be perfect. So you may be, I did a reading a daily ages ago about empaths and A-type. So, very often, and it doesn't fit what you would imagine, empaths can be very scatty because obviously they've got a lot of downloads coming in and that's what I feel is happening here as well. There's a lot of info, there's a lot going on, you can feel this need to take this journey. But at the same time, empaths are also usually people pleasers and high achievers or don't want to let people down, including themselves. And for some of you, oh, getting goosebumps, for some of you, I'm being channeled that you've grown up in a house or a place where you were not allowed to fail. Nobody was allowed to fail. Failing, such a, a loaded word, isn't it? Failing is one of life's greatest lessons to all of us. We all know, for example, I, I, I baked bread when I was a student, okay? I used to bake bread. I wanted to bake really good bread, God knows why, and I wanted to bake it every week. And I, I, oh, God almighty, I baked so many loaves. I mean, I did the ones where you had to turn it over, you know, and 
get it out of the tin and then knock it on the bottom and all that. I remember one of them I lifted and the whole crust just came off the top and inside it was just still stretchy. And then you're like in tears. But by the time I'd done about 25 loaves, maybe more, I could bang that loaf in the oven every week and make it. It was fantastic. House smelled great. And I just, it was, it was second nature. There's something here about trying something, trying something new. So you could be trying a new approach in your relationship. You could be trying a new psychological approach. You could be trying a new, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Therapeutic approach, a new way. Okay, it may not, do you remember we talked about the spiral going down, getting up, going down, getting up, but all the time you're going up, okay? Up and around, not in a straight line and not particularly forwards. You know, where we're going, people, we don't need time forwards and backwards and all that jazz. This is kind of cyclical and also just kind of squibbly and squiggly and weird, like a scribble. A scribble does get somewhere in the end. If you scribble long enough, you make a picture. Okay. So this is about vulnerability, knowing yourself, knowing your limits, and also knowing when to push those limits and when to stick. I feel like some of you are going to be triggered by something or somebody, maybe in a good way as well, this may not be a negative thing, but you're going to be triggered to move beyond your normal limit, to put yourself in the environment where you could fail at something spectacularly, but it may have such a good outcome for you. Oof. Let's have another card to go with that one. I'm loving this. I will be doing an extended reading. So if you get to the end and it really resonates with you, I'll be doing an extended love reading. We take the cards that come up in this reading and the themes and we extend the love reading and channel and do all the same kind of channeling and weirdnesses with different decks. So that will be the first link in the description box if this is really hitting the spot for you. Oof. Okay. Nine of Wands. Nine of Wands is a card of protection and boundaries, again. And this is really speaking to the Strength card. Nine of Wands is your old armour, your old protection, your old way of dealing with things. Scorpio season's job is to dig and dig and dig and to dig beneath the surface and then beneath that surface and beneath that surface. And you end up going down to such an extent that you barely know the way back. And sometimes you end up making com a completely different way back. There is a delicate art here. There's a delicate balance in terms of needing to have your boundaries in place because you can't just be boundaryless. Well, you can, you know, sometimes when you're being creative, it's good to be boundaryless. But if you're interacting with the world, if this is about you interacting, if this is about a creative project, by the way, throw out the rules, do whatever you like don't have boundaries, don't have edges, and experiment the whole time. If this is about dealing with other people, like another human in a relationship, or a bunch of humans at work, or your family, your unit, your friend, whatever, there's something here about finding enough protection for yourself, but at the same time, moving a bit beyond your normal rules. And again, this is coming up for you in different circumstances and in different and very subtle ways. Nobody in November can tell you what to think or do. Not even, you may get like advice from friends or all the rest of it, 
but this is very, very, very personal how you react to this. Okay, I'm noticing she's got red hair as well, which is interesting. Red is important for some reason, but I've been going on about red for a while, like a big red velvet, gorgeous blanket. If you are looking for fortitude in a love relationship, get yourself a beautiful pair of lovely deep, this, this color red, like socks or something just really lovely that you feel lovely in that you feel cozy in okay i just feel like it might help oh look at that okay the world brilliant this is the cycle of what's coming in in november the first card is the fall of the major arcana the last card here we have is the world you own this by the time we get to the next new moon, which will be, and we'll talk about the full moon in a minute as well. Oh, lush, a, a new moon in Sag on the 1st of December, okay? You're going to find yourself in a different place. It's going to be like breaking new ground like you've cycled and cycled and spiraled and gone up and gone up and gone up and you feel like you own the globe. The, you feel like you own the globe of this situation. That you are in charge of your own world, which is a massive achievement. This is not the same as controlling your world. Controlling your world diminishes it this kind of allowing and vulnerability and self-knowledge makes your world grow. This is about growing your universe, making things expand as we move into 2025. It's, and I keep getting sewing and threads, the threads of which will be picked up as we move into 2025. Now, there may be a revelation and there may be some high emotion around the time of the full moon, which is, let me just see, it's about the 15th, isn't it, of November? And it's in Taurus. Yep, yeah, 15th, Saturn going direct on the same day. I personally think this is a big green light day. I'm not saying it's all glitter and unicorns, but it is a big green light day, okay? So you may end up having a big talk. You may end up having an emotional exchange. Let's take a card for it before we say. It feels like it's you, but it feels a bit, ooh, yes. Right, Queen of Cups, okay. I'll just put these to one side a bit. Right, you crazy empaths, Queen of Cups is here. Think of yourself as a water goddess around the time of the full moon, okay? Which is really interesting. You are not after firm facts and you are not speaking firm words. You're feeling your way through a situation. You will have maybe the beginnings of this already. You'll have ripples of um, intuition about this already. Pay attention to them. Because, let's take another card for that full moon. It feels like anything that needs to be uncovered, you're going to know how to uncover it. But you're also gonna slightly know about it anyway in advance. Empaths are not empaths for nothing. Wheel of Fortune. This is a good day. This is a day of revelations, but it's also a day in which luck is going to play a part. So this could literally be that you bump into someone you've really needed to talk to, that you get information about something you've been dying to hear about. It's not the complete end of the story, but it's 
more than a step in the right direction because the wheel of fortune is not a step, it's not linear. You're being pushed onto another cycle of something different, something new and something, I, I get the word healthier, something healthier. There's a whole lot of feminine energy going on here as well. You need to trust your feminine energy in November. There's still quite a lot of shadow work. There's still quite a lot of shadows and things being brought from dark into light and things being brought from light into dark where you are taking things that you have at the moment, thoughts, feeling, people, relationships, and pushing them into the shadows and letting them go. And it feels like in all of that sort of shade, I suppose, your beacon is your intuition and your femininity and your ability to feel your own strength and stick with it and stick with yourself. Oh my God, that is perfect. Yeah, the moon. So the moon is calling to mind anyone involved with water. So this can be Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio. So it could be that that is in your chart a lot or the person that you're dealing with is a water sign. But more importantly, the moon is about mystery and it's about the subconscious and it's about lunar energy, feminine energy, borrowed light. Follow the moon cycle in November, okay? I feel like when we get to the point, we're on about the 25th, I think, 26th, where Mercury goes retrograde, that is a different cycle. You're onto a whole new thing there. I'm not going to include that in this reading because it's not part of this arc. Once you get onto Mercury retrograde at the end of November, you're into something else. You're into like a yearly review because you sort of pop out the other end of it, sort of near the end. God, it's always Mercury retrograde around Christmas when you need to get gifts, isn't it? Anyway, this is almost like a perfect loop. It's very, very powerful. Do not underestimate your feminine energy in this. Very, very, very important, okay? And don't underestimate the ability of the cycle, literally like the female cycle, the moon cycle, to push its own agenda. So use it. When it's a full moon, have the big conversations, have the big ideas, let things out, express what you need to express. When it's the new moon, and we have that lovely new moon on the 1st, gorgeous, 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 and then again on the 1st of December, sorry, 1st of December we've got the new moon and also on the 1st of November yeah we've got that gorgeous right Scorpio moon so think about on the 1st of November the Scorpio new moon is definitely putting shadow work into motion calling on you to make to plant seeds and to be able to not control because you don't control things when they grow but to know what you want to plant and to know what you don't want to keep, okay? If this was like a sort of cosmic garden, let's say. Not that I'm a gardener because I'm not. That's a very scorpionic new moon. By the time we go full circle and we're down, we're up or round or wherever we're going to the 1st of December, it's a new moon in Sagittarius, which is dreams and aspirations and Jupiter. So we're, no, we're above ground when we are on the 1st of December. When we start November, we are in the underworld. Pluto, you know, Scorpio. And you're sort of spiralling your way out and up and up and up towards clarity. And you will get there, but do use the moon's influences as and when you can. I'm going to take a couple of love oracle cards as well. Okay, you want to come out. Ooh. Anticipation. This is nice. 
So this is embrace the sweet anticipation of love's arrival in your life. It's coming. That's nice. It's also a nice light card. It feels like we're sort of breaking ground, literally. This feels like you are breaking ground from the underworld up. It's not easy, by the way. This is not, I think we already know this, and leave me a comment. It's not been an easy Scorpio season, has it? It never is. I say this every year. It never is. And it's not supposed to be, let's face it. Oh, I love this. Your hope and optimism are a powerful love magnet for you right now. Woof. Okay, I'm going to take one more of those, actually, because I'm feeling it. And you're like, no, Gemma, don't do that. We've seen you feel it before. In the extended reading, I'm going to do an extended love reading. We're going to look at what is going on in your love relationship in depth. And we're going to get some detail on that. We're going to ask, how do they feel about you? How do you feel about them? How do you gel together? How do you not gel together? What are the obstacles? What is the solution? What do we need to know about? We're going to have a good old deep dive into that. <laughs> Settling. Avoid. Settling for less than you deserve in love. Absolutely. Absolutely. Oof. Okay. If you want to join me for the extended, it's the first link in the description box. Leave me a comment. Love reading your comments, okay? I read all my comments and I reply to as many as I can possibly reply to. And thank you for all your lovely messages about healing. I'm taking it all on board. My eyes are taking it all on board. Um, and I'll be back on camera soon. Namaste.